Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're the Gnomes of. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making some uh, acorn lanterns that light up. We're also going to be making a couple more candles, and this time we're going to be using paper to make them, and they also light up. As always, there are detailed timestamps and links to my project in the pinned comment below. Let's get started. All right, I am using string LED lights that I get in the dollar store. These are, uh, they don't heat up and they're submersible. All right, I'm also using 20 gauge wire, an acorn, of course, with a cap, and I'm using a Dremel. Now I got this Dremel off Amazon and I'm not an expert with any of its parts. In fact, mine didn't even come with a sheet that tells me what anything is, but I'm using uh, one of these um, saw blades here to cut the acorn. And then this little pink block, it kind of like is a sanding block, but I'm not too sure, but it did, it did the job. And I'm also using a drill bit. And then we'll need some white glue and hot glue. You'll need a pointy tool like this all. And I also use this scoopy tool thing. I don't know what the name is. It, I got it in a thrift store. It's a uh, tool for clay, but it's got a little scoopy spoon on the end. And I use that to clean out the acorn, but you can use whatever you can find in your uh, craft stash. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using. And a pair of pliers, of course, and something to cut wire with. You'll also need a little piece of plastic. Now I just used a piece of plastic from this bag. All right, so I just made a little mark with my felt pen where I want my window to be. But first I'm going to uh, place some masking tape that are rolled up underneath so it's sticky on all sides. And then I'll put a, a longer piece on top, just something to hang on to. And now I'm gonna create a little hole where I marked off with the felt pen there. Just a tiny hole with my X-Acto blade just to get it started. And that'll make it easier for the Dremel later. So now I'm going to cut the top off, and this is on the fatter end of the acorn, of course. So I marked a line there that I can follow with my Dremel. Make sure you turn the Dremel on before you touch the acorn. So there, I've turned it on now. And now I'll follow that line on the top side. And now I'll turn it around and I'll do the other side. And there we go, we've got the top cut off. Now the nut inside is gonna be so firmly packed in there, it's gonna be difficult to, to take it all out. If you go um, hard at it, it's gonna crack the, the nut or the shell. So just little bits at a time until you can get a bigger piece out and then the rest of it will follow. So now I'm going to uh, drill that hole a little bit more. You can see that hole was already bigger and that's because I'd already worked on it for about a minute or so uh, with this little pink block. And again, the Dremel was turned on. And I'm holding firmly with my thumb and my finger so the shell doesn't vibrate too much. And I'm just pulsating on top very gently with that pink block. And it's, it'll take a little bit of patience, but we eventually get there and get that hole large enough for the uh, window of light to shine through. And now the inside of the acorn is going to be covered with like a uh, dusty fur type material. You want to clean all that out using a little tool, scraping it out because we, I, I do paint mine, you don't have to paint yours, but we do want to add a little bit of glue in there when we put our window in. So it's best to get all that material out, otherwise the glue won't stick. So I paint mine yellow just to have that extra glow. Now I'm gonna put the cap on, and my little window, I'm gonna place it forward, and in the very back, I'm marking off just underneath the cap, and this is where the hole is gonna go, where I can put the string light through. So now that I know that's marked off, I am just eyeing it up and marking it off on the inside to match that mark I just made. And now I'm gonna make an indent into the shell with my awl. Sometimes you can push right through with the awl. And this will help the drill. So I turn the drill on before I touch the acorn shell and then push through on that mark that I made. And I'll just make sure that the light will fit through there, and it does. So now I could add the window on the other side. So I'm just cutting a little piece of plastic and I'm going to paint some uh, tacky glue on the inside all the way around the window. And now I can just push the plastic in with my little finger. I just rubbed off some of the glue that came through there. And using a tool, I'll just make sure that the plastic's pushed down into the glue all the way around. And I'll let that dry. All right, if your acorn cap has lost its stem and you want to add one, what I do is I file down the very top with an emery board. And then from the bottom, I'm gonna push through with my awl. You wanna work gently at first, of course, so you don't crack anything. But push through the bottom, and then from the top, push down as well. And wiggle that all around until you get that hole a little bit bigger. Once you get a little bit bigger, you can also use a, a drill bit. Go back and forth with that. It doesn't take very long. 
I also add a coat of clear nail polish. Now you don't have to do that. I just like the shine that it gives and it also highlights all the little details in the acorn cap that you otherwise wouldn't see if you don't polish them. All right, so now we can create a stem by pulling a piece of twine through the hole that we made. If the twine is too thick, of course, you can just remove a layer. First, you wanna roll it in glue. And now I can pull it through the hole in the cap. I'll pull it up just so far. Now I can cut off the excess. And you wanna position this in the way that you want it to sit forever because once that glue dries, that stem's gonna be stuck in place in any position that you put it. So the other end I opened up with my awl, as you can see, smashed it into the glue because I don't wanna see those hanging down in, in my window. Now I painted that once it was dry with uh, burnt umber and now I'm dry brushing on a bit of beige and I really like how that turned out and I was able to match it to my other acorn lamp. And now attaching the cap, I'm gonna put tacky glue all the way around the edge, place the cap on, making sure I have the stem facing the way I want it to face. And using masking tape to hold the shell and the cap together tight while the glue is drying and then dry it upside down so that the glue doesn't drip down into the window. Now you want to put the holes where you want the acorn lamps to go and pull the string light through. And I have a wire here that I've, I've doubled over and I'll show you how I shape that in a second. First I'm going to place the light in. I'm going to turn the light on so I know exactly where it's positioned inside the acorn. I fold my wire in half and then I create a hook out of the bend and then the other two ends, the prongs, we're going to go through the wall and open up on the other side. So the bend that's going upwards is going to hold that acorn up a little straighter so it's like a hook on the inside. Once I have it positioned the way I want it, uh, place a little dot of hot glue in that hole around the light and the wire. And now I just have to hang on to it while that hot glue cools down. So just hang on, a little bit of patience there, and then you can let it go. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can shove the prongs through the acorn and open them up on the other side and just let them hang on like that. If you're planning on selling yours, I wouldn't just rely on the hot glue alone. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second. On the other side, I, I was playing around with light ideas and the prong wires that came through I'm using them to hold my lights up on the other side. I have since changed my mind and I've removed these lights and I'll show you how I fix this string in the next couple of clips. But anyway, I just put candle lights inside the uh, acorn shells and I was gonna use them on each side of the door on the inside. But like I said, I've changed my mind. So on this side, because we don't wanna rely on just hot glue, I've got a little piece of fabric and I've cut it in a, in a thin length and I'm gonna dip it in this glue here. You can use string as well. I'm just using fabric because that's what I had on hand. I'm just gonna wash my hands <laughs> before I continue here. And now I'll take that saturated piece of fabric, still wet with the glue, I'm gonna wrap it around where the light string and the wire is just coming out of that hole. So the fabric is actually up against the acorn shell itself and then wrapped a little ways down the wire and the light string. Now I've added a bit of tacky glue here on the end where it's gonna be pushed into the wall. And now I can push these prongs in through the acorn wall. And all the way up, I'm gonna push them as far as they'll go so that fabric is kind of smushed into the wall. So once it's dry, it becomes a solid piece with the, with the acorn shell and the acorn wall that I just pushed, pushed it through. I've opened up the prongs, so now the prongs is holding it tight while that fabric dries. So this one here, I don't have the fabric in there and it just has the hot glue, which potentially could just let go and your acorn light could you know, fall down a little bit. So that's why I like the idea of fabric first or string wrapped around there and let that dry. And once that was dry, now I just have to cut the wires off. So I have two different pairs of pliers here, one with the side cutter and one with the front cutters. So either one will work. You wanna make sure you don't cut your light string, of course, maybe turn the lights on so you know exactly where you're, you're cutting. So I'm gonna cut right up against the wall. In that hole where I just cut the wire free, I'm putting in a little bit of E6000. You can also use a tacky glue or any glue. Just shove it into that hole there and then wipe off the excess with your finger. All right, so to give you a clear view of the interior of the acorn, I just did a makeshift wall here with my door and my two windows, just like inside the acorn. The wire goes from the inside to the outside. Now the rest of this string, it can either go above the door or below it, and I'll show you both ways. So mine's going above the door and behind that little ridge, right? So I'm gonna tape that in. Before I tape it all in, I'm gonna bring one of the, the bulbs down here and I have to double it up and then push it through. And then the rest of the string goes doubles up and then 
all the other lights are lighting up the acorn, but they're hidden away. If I couldn't hide them away, you can black out the lights uh, using black electrical tape or you can paint them. The other option is if before you put in your, your second floor, you can bring the light string down below the door. And this is my first idea that I was going to use. And then the other string goes, you have to double it up again, stick it through. And now the doubled wire is coming down. So the rest of the light string, you can either hide those away, like I said, paint them or black electrical tape, or use them underneath the second floor. You could attach them all underneath the floor here and then hide the battery pack. I've turned the acorn on its side and you're looking into the ceiling of the acorn. So the remaining uh, string light I've placed all the way around the inside wall inside the cap there I had a little bit of space so that worked out really nice and I've brought the battery pack where it's going to sit uh, front and center above my access door. I'm going to make a sleeve for the uh, battery pack using cardstock. So I'm just going to custom fit this sleeve for the battery pack. It's like wrapping a present. <laughs> okay once I got that all figured out and I'm going to place the battery pack make sure I can slide it in in and out very easily. I don't want to have to struggle with this later. So tacky glue all the way around the edge and then I'll put hot glue in the center so the hot glue will hold it up in the ceiling while the tacky glue dries. And now testing this out I absolutely love the fact that I can just reach up and hit that switch and able to pull the batteries out when I need to change them. So easy. All right guys, now we're gonna to put together a light up candle using paper. And uh, this idea came from one of you wonderful viewers. I had just put up a couple of videos showing how to do light up candles using embroidery thread. One was using wax crayons and one was using a candle. And uh, one of you viewers asked if paper would work. And I thought, wow, what a great idea. So this is that idea going into action here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a thin or a narrow piece of paper and I'm gonna dip it in the glue there. And I'm going to wrap this one on the wire underneath the bulb. And this is going to bring the wire up to the same thickness as the bulb. So when I put my actual paper on there, it'll be easier to wrap. Now I'll take uh, another piece of paper and you can make this as tall as you want to make it. And you can make it as thin or as fat as you want. Now I can wrap this over just underneath the bulb. I, I like to go over the bulb a little bit because the bulb is kind of large. And then down to the bottom of that first piece of paper I wrapped. Wrap around and there we go, candle is made. And you can stick that candle anywhere you wanna stick it in the house, of course. I'm gonna put it inside this acorn shell just to show you uh, how, how I did this one. So I just put a little dot of hot glue just to hold the candle bottom in place there. You can also use wax, of course. I'm gonna take a real candle, gonna light that. I'm gonna drip wax over the paper bead just to kind of make it look a little bit more authentic looking and down the wire so it looks like it's dripping down the wire as well. I'm going to make one more using a jewelry piece. I'm going to put that jewelry piece on the wire first and now the narrow strip I'm going to make a curly cue type thing make it easier for rolling. So this is the third paper bead candle I'm attempting. <laughs> so it's getting a little bit you know more ideas coming to me. So I got the first piece on now I'm doing this the actual candle piece again I'm going to make a curly cue. All right and dip that one in the glue and wrap that around the wire and just a little bit of the bulb. Once it's as fat as I want it to be, then I'll just tear that off, add a bit of glue to hold that in place. I am in love with this method right here. This is so simple and so quick to do. And I'm gonna use the wax again. I'm gonna cover up the whole candle. And this wax um, makes it look authentic. Also will cover up the paper seam. So I'm gonna be using this method a whole lot in the future. They're so quick, so simple to do. And a big thank you to that viewer who suggested the paper bead candles. I think they're they're just awesome. All right, and somebody else asked if you can cut these lights and I just tried it out and yes, you can. Now that's for this brand that I'm using right here. These are from the dollar store. I can't guarantee that you can cut all the lights out there, but the ones that I'm using from the dollar store, yes, you can. All right, my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you know when the next video is available. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.